Hey friends, here we go with day three of our bell ringers. And we're gonna start with our daily fact family. So the first thing you should do is ask yourself, what are the vocabulary words that we've been practicing as we go through solving our multiplication and division equations? Thanks to the commutative property, we know that we can multiply the factors in either order and still get the same product or answer. With division, it works a little bit differently. With division, you're going to take your larger number, 48, that's your dividend, and divide that into groups, which is called your divisor. So we're going to take 48 and divide it by 6, and that's going to give us our quotient or our answer. And then we take 48 and we can divide it by 8 and get 6. Larger unit of measurement, whoops. Okay, next we're going to do our measurement problem. And for this one, we're going to remember horse to fly, multiply. Feet are a <laughs> Feet are our larger unit of measurement than inches. So since I'm moving from larger to smaller, I'm going to multiply to figure out the answer. We're going to take our 12 feet and multiply it by 12 inches in each foot. 12 times 12 equals 144 inches. And what do you guys notice about this number? Do you notice that both of the factors are the same? That means that 144 is a special kind of number called a square number. Fun fact for you. Okay, next we're going to take our 60 inches and divide it by 12 inches and a foot. And if you don't remember what 60 divided by 12 is, I want you to look up a multiplication table for yourself. You can just look one up online, multiplication table, and see what 60 divided by 12 is. Now, hopefully you're remembering that the best way to learn math when you're watching a math video is to pause the video while you solve the problem and then double check once you've already found your answer. Okay, so hopefully you guys paused the video and you now are looking to see if you also got five feet as your answer. Okay, next we're going to identify and describe this shape. First thing we're going to do is count the number of sides. I can count one, two, three, four, five sides. And a shape with five sides is called a pentagon. And what do you notice about the angles? Would you say they're acute, obtuse, or right angles? Now remember, a good way that you can test this is by taking, um, you could take a piece of paper and just rip off a corner, or you can take a little square post-it note or something and just tuck it in the corner, and then you can compare the angle of the square, which is a right angle, to the angle of the pentagon, and you can see that it's bigger. The angle of the pentagon is bigger by about this much. Since the angles are larger than 90 degrees, they are obtuse angles. So I'm gonna say all angles are obtuse. Now, another thing that I'm noticing about this shape, let me get my little square out of the way here for a second, if I can. Let me. Mm, here we go. Okay, so another thing I'm noticing is that this is a symmetrical shape. If I drew an imaginary line right down the middle of the shape here and folded it in half on that line, the two halves of the shape would match exactly. So this blue half, when I fold it in half, is going to exactly match this red half. 
So that means that it is a symmetrical shape. Some shapes have more than one line of symmetry, but this one appears to only have one line of symmetry. Meaning if I folded it in half going the other way, I can show that with green. If I folded it in half this way, mm, no, this half is not gonna match. This green half is not gonna match the other half. So this shape I think only has one line of symmetry. Now here's a challenge for you. I wonder if we folded it diagonally, would it be symmetrical? Mm, no, I'm still gonna say no. I stand by my first answer. One line of symmetry. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to look at this figure and we're going to calculate the volume. Now, what I would like you to do is start getting into the habit of seeing these figures as two separate shapes. And the reason I want you to do that is because it's going to be a little easier for you to cal calculate the volume of this part of the shape first and then calculate the volume of this part of the shape and then add them together. If you had cubes at home or if you were in the classroom, I would have you actually build these shapes. So think of them as being like layers. Here's the bottom layer of this part and there is an invisible layer down below that you can't see because you're gonna end up with this part of the shape on top of it or kind of blocking the side view of it. So the bottom layer Let's see, I see one, two cubes going side to side, two cubes going side to side, and one, two, three, four cubes going back. So two times four is eight, and there's two layers of eight cubes here. The second layer is just stacked right on top. Can you guys see that? Here's the second layer of eight cubes. So the second layer of eight cubes brings this figure to a total of 16 cubic units. Okay, so 16 cubic units plus whatever the second shape is. And let's see, we've got three cubes going across, three, and then one, two, three, four going back. So that means this is a group of 12 cubes. So now we just have to figure out what 16 plus 12 is. 16 plus 12, you guys figure that out. Don't forget, write your answer and label it cubic units. We always wanna have a label. Okay, last problem, we're gonna do our line plot. I'm going to draw my x-axis, which is the horizontal line that goes side to side. And then I'm going to label my lowest value and my highest value. So let me see, 42, is that my lowest value? I think so. Okay, so I'm gonna do 40 as my lowest value because you guys know I like to have nice symmetrical numbers. And then I'll go up to 60 because I don't think there's anything bigger than that. All right, so biggest value, smallest value, 50 in the middle, 45, 55. Okay, and then we can go ahead and do 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. Okay. And then each one of these numbers represents one piece of data, and we're going to represent that data with, instead of the number, we're gonna put an X above the number on the line plot. So for 42, we're gonna put an X over the 42 on the line plot. For 45, put an X over the 45. Another 45, another 45, a 48, a 36, oh, look at that, I missed my 36. I'll just squeeze it in here, that's okay. My bad, 50, 52, 60, and 50. 